Hello dear children. Chapter 3 Current Electricity We'll do the numericals of this chapter. Let's revise the important formulae you have studied in this chapter. Potential difference is equal to work upon charge. Please note potential difference is denoted by the letter B, work by the letter W and charge by the letter Q. So V is equal to W upon Q. Current is equal to charge upon time. Please note current is denoted by the letter I, charge by Q and time by T. So I is equal to Q upon T. Resistance is equal to potential difference upon current. Resistance is denoted by the letter R, potential difference by the letter V and current. So R is equal to V upon I. This is Ohm's law. On rearranging, we also get it as V is equal to IR. Again, we can also write it as I is equal to V upon R. Effective resistance in series is denoted as Rs. If R1, R2 are the resistors, up to n number of resistors, then we can say Rs is equal to R1 plus R2 plus dot 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 I up to as Rn. Similarly, effective resistance in parallel is denoted as Rp and 1 upon Rp is equal to 1 upon R1 plus 1 upon R2 plus 1 upon R3 plus dot 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 plus 1 upon Rn where R1, R2, R3, Rn are the resistors. Now let's do the first sum. A current of 0 0.4 amperes, A stands for amperes, flows through a conductor for 5 minutes. How much charge would have passed through the conductor? So let's write the given. Current I is equal to 0 0.4 amperes, that is A. Flows through a conductor for 5 minutes. That means time T is equal to 5 minutes. Now this 5 minutes should be converted into MK system because current is in the amperes which is in the MK system. So 5 multiplied by 60 will give us it in seconds that is 300 seconds. How much charge would have passed through the conductor to find charge Q? So what's the formula? Formula is equal to I is equal to Q upon T. This is what you have learned. Now on rearranging you will get Q is equal to I multiplied by T. Now we can substitute the values. I is 0 0.4 and T is 300 seconds. So Q is equal to 0 0.4 into 300 and that's equal to 120. C stands for Coulomb. The unit of uh, charge is Coulomb and so we can write it also as capital C. So therefore charge passing through the conductor is equal to 120 Coulomb. Let's go to the second question. If a charge of 420 Coulomb flows through a conducting wire in 5 minutes, what is the value of the current? So let's write the given. Charge Q is equal to 420 Coulomb. Through, flows through a conducting wire in 5 minutes. That means time T is equal to 5 minutes. Now this should be converted into seconds. So 5 into 60 and that's equal to 300 seconds. What is the value of current? So to find current I. Now formula used will be I is equal to Q upon T. So let's begin with the solution. We'll substitute the values. I is equal to 420 upon 300. Now we have to reduce it. You know there are zeros in the last digit in both numerator and denominator. So can we can cancel it. So that now it is 42 upon 30. Both are divisible by 6. So let's reduce it. 6 7s are 42 and 6 5s are 30. So that's equal to 7 upon 5. Now when you divide 7 upon 5 you will get it as 1.4. Now the Current, it is current we have found and the unit of current is ampere so we can denote it as A. So therefore the current flowing is 1.4 ampere or 
capital A you can write. Let's go to question 3. The resistance of the filament in a light bulb is 1000 ohms. If the bulb is fed by a current from a source of potential difference 230 volt, how much current will flow through it? Now, the resistance of the filament in a light bulb is 1000 ohms. So, let's write given resistance is equal to 1000 ohms. If the bulb is fed by a current from a source of potential difference 230 volt means potential difference V is equal to 230 volt. To find current I. Yes, to find current I. Now, we have to do the solution. That is, we will substitute the value I is equal to 230 upon 1000. Now, of course, the last digit zeros can be cancelled. But please note, Division by 10 or 100 or 1000 is very easy. You just have to count the digit zeros in the denominator and put the decimal point in the numerator very easily depending on the number of zeros. So now there are three zeros. So the decimal point when the, it doesn't see, we need to know that it is after the last digit and you have to count three digits to the left. That is, it will be 0 0.230. Now, the zero after the decimal point has no value, so we will just write it as I is equal to 0 0.23 amperes because it's a current, it is amperes. So, let's write the final step. Therefore, current flowing through the filament of the bulb is 0 0.23 amperes. Number four, a current of 0 0.24 amperes flows through a conductor when a potential difference of 24 volt is applied between its ends. What is its resistance? So current I, given current I is equal to 0 0.24. Flows through a conductor when a potential difference of 24 volts. That means potential difference V is 24 volt. Is applied between its ends. What is its resistance? So we have to find resistance R. So what's the formula? R is equal to V upon I. Yes, according to Ohm's law. So, let's begin the sum. So, we'll substitute the values. 24 upon 0 0.24. So, now how do we reduce? So, now we have decimal point in the denominator. Let us remove this decimal point from the denominator. Now, how do we remove? Count the number of digits after the decimal point. So, there are two digits in the denominator after the decimal point. So, multiply the numerator by 100. If there was one digit, you would multiply by 10. If there are three digits, you would multiply by 1000 and goes on like that. So, we will write R is equal to 24 and then this number 0 0.24 without the decimal point. When you write it, it will be just 24 and in the numerator, you will have a 100. Now, you know 24 and 24 can be cancelled and that's 1. So, R is equal to 100 ohms. The unit of resistance is ohms. So, therefore, the final step resistance of the conductor is equal to 100 ohms. Let's begin with sum number 5. Determine the current that will flow when a potential difference of 33 volt is applied between two ends of an appliance having a resistance of 110 ohms. If the same current is to flow through an appliance having a resistance of 500 ohms, how much potential difference should be applied across its two ends? So, my dear children, there are two parts in the sum. So, let's do first part and then the second part. So, the first case. Determine the current that will flow when a potential difference of 33 volts. So, let's write down first case given will be potential difference is equal to 33 volts. Between two ends of an appliance having a resistance of 110 ohms. So, resistance R is equal to 110. So, now determine the current. So, in the first case, we have to find the current I. So, what's the formula? I is equal to V upon R. Let's substitute the values. V value is 33 and R is 110. So, we get 33 upon 110. Both the numbers are divisible by 11. So, let's reduce it. Yes, 3 upon 10 will be again as I said with the earlier sum. You just have to count the 0 in the denominator 
and place a decimal point towards the left side, counting the number of digits to the left. So this will be 0 0.3. Since it is current, we write the unit as ampere A. So the final step for the first case will be the current that will flow will be 0 0.3 ampere. Now we'll do second part that is second case. If the same current is to flow through an appliance having a resistance of 500 ohms, that means same current is flowing means current will be 0 0.3. So let's write the second case. Given will be current I is equal to 0 0.3 having a resistance of 500 ohms. So resistance R is equal to 500 ohms. How much potential difference should be applied across its two ends? That means to find this potential difference V. So what's the formula? V is equal to IR. Yes. Now let's substitute the values. You know the value of I, you know the value of R and that's why We'll substitute it and this is 0 0.3 into 500 and that's equal to 150 volt. Potential difference unit is volts and so we write it as V. So let's write the final step. Therefore, the required potential difference between its two ends is equal to 150 volt. Let's go to the six. Three resistors having resistances of 15 ohms, 3 ohms and 4 ohms are connected in series. What is the effective resistance in the circuit? Now, three resistors having resistances 15 ohm, 3 ohm, and 4 ohms. That means given resistance R1 is equal to 15 ohms, R2 is equal to 3 ohms, and R3 is equal to 4 ohms are connected in series. What is the effective resistance in the circuit? That means to find effective resistance in series, that is RS. So, Let's write the formula Rs is equal to R1 plus R2 plus R3 and solution will be, we'll substitute the values that is 15 plus 3 plus 4 and that's equal to 22 ohms. So the final step for this answer will be effective resistance and the circuit is equal to 22 ohms. Two resistors having resistances of 16 ohms and 14 ohms are connected in series. If a potential difference of 18 volt is applied across them, calculate the current flowing through the circuit and the potential difference across each individual resistor. So let's write the given. Yes, resistances of 16 ohms and 14 ohms. So we will write R1, resistance R1 is equal to 16 ohms and res R2 is equal to 14 ohms. And please note they are connected in series. So let's write down. Yes. Potential difference of 18 volt is applied across them means potential difference V is this. Calculate the current flowing through the circuit. So let's write down current I and the potential difference across each, in each individual resistor means across R1 also, R2 also. So potential difference across each individual resistor that is V1 and V2 we have to find out. So let's write down. So current I. Yes, first of all, we have to find, they are connected in series, so we have to find Rs is equal to R1 plus R2 and that's equal to 16 plus 14 and that's equal to 30 ohms. So we have got the resistance Rs is equal to 30 ohms. Now current I is equal to V upon R according to Ohm's law. So we can substitute the value, V is 18 and R is 30. So I is equal to 18 upon 30 and that's, we can reduce it. Both the numbers go in the table of 6, I know. But if you reduce it by 3, you will have 10 in the denominator. So 6 upon 10, you may do it as you feel. So 6 upon 10 will be just 0 0.6 because you have to just count the zeros in the denominator and place a decimal point in the numerator that will be 0 0.6 ampere. So the current I, the first part of the sum, current flowing through the circuit is 0 0.68. Now we have to find potential difference across each individual resistor. That is first we'll find V1 and then V2. So let's do it. Now you know the formula V is equal to IR. 
So V1 will be IR1. Now V I value we have already got 0 0.6 and R1 value is 16. Ohm. So, let's substitute the values and V1 is equal to 9.6 ohm. Same way we will do V2 and V2 is equal to IR2 and let's substitute the values 0 0.6 into 14 and that is equal to 8.4 and therefore we'll write the final step that is potential difference across the resistance is 16 ohms and 14 ohms and 9.6 volt and 8.4 Let's move on to the next sum. Resistors having resistances of 15 ohms, 20 ohms and 10 ohms are connected in parallel. What is the effective resistance in the circuit? Please note they are connected in parallel. We have to write given resistances R1, R2, R3 will be 15 ohms, 20 ohms and 10 ohms. Now we have to find the effective resistance in the circuit means it is Rp we have to find because they are connected in parallel. So the formula is 1 upon Rp is equal to 1 upon R1 plus 1 upon R2 plus 1 upon R3. Let's substitute the values. Now the denominator you have is 15, 20 and 10. They are three different denominators. So you have learned this in maths whenever you have denominators which are not of the same number you cannot add the fraction. You have to equalize the denominator. How do we equalize? We have to find the LCM of 15, 20 and 10. So LCM of 15, 20 and 10 is 60. You have learned this in maths. So now each of your denominator should become 60. So 15 into 4 is 60. So 1 should be multiplied by 4 to give you 60. Now 1 should be multiplied by 4. 20 into 3 is 60. So, one should be, this one should be multiplied by 3. 10 into 6 is 60. So, this one should be multiplied by 6. So, you will have 4 plus 3 plus 6. And now, add it up. It will become 13 upon 60. So, 1 upon Rp is 13 upon 60. We have to find Rp. Now, how do we find Rp? You can cross multiply or you can just do the invert end. If you do the invert end, it will be Rp upon 1 is equal to 60 upon 30. And now you have the Rp value is 60 upon 30. Divide it and get the answer and that's equal to 4.615 ohms. So your final answer for this question will be effective resistance in the circuit is 4.615 ohms. Let's do the 9 sum. 3 resistors having resistances of 5 ohms, 10 ohms and 30 ohms are connected in parallel and a potential difference of 12 ohm is applied across them. Obtain the current flowing through the circuit and through individual resistors. What is the effective resistance in the circuit? So let's write down the resistances that is 5 ohms, 10 ohms and 30 ohms, R1, R2 and R2 are connected in parallel and a potential difference of 12 volt. That means potential difference is 12. Obtain the current flowing. So we have to find current I, yes, and through in the, uh, current flowing through the circuit and through individual resistors. That what is the effective resistance in the circuit? Current flowing through individual resistors means R1, I1, I2 and I3. What is the effective resistance in the circuit? We have also to find R. So let's do. Now current flowing through the circuit. I cannot be found out without finding out I1, I2, I3. So first we have to find I1, I2, I3. And then we have to add up the total and then find the current I. So let's do the second part of the sum first. So uh, we know the solution I is equal to V upon R. V value is 12 ohm and in the first case we will use I1. I1 will be 12 upon 5. So I1 will be V upon R1. Let's substitute the values 12 upon 5 when you divide it. You will have to divide so you will get it as 2.4 amperes. Now we have to find I2. I2 will be V upon R2. V value remains the same 12. R2 value will be 10. So we will have 12 upon 10. 
Now, please just put the decimal point that is 1.2 amperes. Now, we have to find I3. So, I3 will be V upon R3. V is 12 and R3 is 30. So, we will have 30 upon 12 upon 30. And when you reduce it, you will get it as 0 0.4 amperes. So, we have found the value of I1, I2, I3. Now, we can find the current flowing through the circuit will be I1 plus I2 plus I3. Through individual resistors will be, yes, they have asked a question through individual resistance. So, it will be 2.4, 1.2A and 0.4A. Now, current flowing through the circuit will be, so this will be equal to 4 amperes. 4.0 means just 4 amperes. So, therefore, current flowing through the circuit is 4 amperes. Now, the last part, the effective resistance Rp. So, the formula of this is R1 upon R1 plus 1 upon R2 plus 1 upon R2. Let's substitute the values. Yes, you can see the denominators are 5, 10 and 30. So, you have to find the LCM of 5, 10 and 30 and the LCM is 30. So, 5 into 6 will give us 30. So, 1 should be multiplied by 6. 10 into 3 will give us 30. So, this 1 will be multiplied by 3. And 30 into 1 is 30. So, this will remain as 1. So, we will have 6 plus 3 plus 1. And that is 10 upon 30. Now, we will do the invert and do. That is RP upon 1 will be 30 upon 30. And so RP will be, just have to reduce it and that is 3 ohms. So the final answer, effective resistance will be 3 ohms. So that's all. These are the numerical sums that you will be doing in the chapter current electricity. Try to understand and then copy it up one by one. Thank you.